a man in love, an amused boy, a curious courtesan. All those examples show the laugh as a personal experience that we as viewers only witness, but there are some examples that make us feel like part of the joke. The first example is a series of paintings of a laughing medieval jester from a Netherland author, painted around the 1500s. Some sources show Jacob Cornelis, Van Ovesan and is the original painter. The image of the full half hiding its face with a large grim smile was well known until the image of the sad jester became more interesting for the artists in the 1800s, like the representation of the melancholic jester in Stanchik by Jan Machko finished in 1862. But the face of the laughing jester comes back in 1900 when the popular culture appropriates its wide mad smile. Very well then. Ask yourselves, what is wrong with this sentence? He who laughs last, laughs good. <laughs> Look at the face of the fool. He cannot stop his laughter. We can almost hear the sound of it. He is hiding one of the sides of his face, but his eyes make direct contact with the audience. He wants you to laugh with him. While he is holding a pair of empty glasses frames in front of his chest. Although the stereotypical medieval jester is portrayed as the town fool, a trickster, sometimes painted with donkey ears and tail, the charisma of such characters evolves and grows to the opposite point. While treated as a clown, which role is to amuse the royal members, he was allowed to dress funny, act delusional and tell jokes, that sometimes represented the truth, that nobody wanted to say. The pair of frames had no glasses and was used to mock the audience, but if we think of what the glasses represent, we can see the duality of the Joker's character. Was he left without an instrument to see the world around him, or he really does not need them to see its true nature? Jack is dead, my friend. You can call me Joker. And as you can see, Disguised as a deranged figure, the jester image lived through the centuries and today we can see the echo of his uncanny laugh and personages representing the chaos in the person's mind that can grow and infect the others. And if the jester is the face of the foolish and chaotic laugh, the Democritus, the laughing philosopher painted by Johannes Morials around 1630 shows the face of the cruel laugh. The young philosopher is giggling at the vanity of mankind and the transience of the world leaned ahead and pointing at the globe with his finger. It's part of a diptych that includes Heraclitus, the weeping philosopher. Morials painted several versions of the composition facing or backward to the audience. The series explores how one side of existence and life can be processed equally as tragic and hilarious. From our perspective, the diptych is more relevant than ever. The laugh of the clown and the philosopher are different like the chaos and the order are, but directed towards the audience reflects the way we think about society and our role in it. Two policemen are in critical condition. You're <laughs> laughing. You're laughing. Someone was killed today because of what you did. I know. <laughs> While in the tavern laugh, we can be just viewers, sitting on the next table, the thought that we did not get the joke of the wildest and the most structured mind makes us feel uncomfortable, that we missed something. What's that stench? Soaking more guts. Had to get it from the inside. I'll take what I'm owed. Toss a coin to your witch. In the next part of our video, we will see how the representation of the laugh in art became more and more connected to social criticism and mirror one of the most serious themes of its time. Watching the jester and the philosopher laugh makes us think about the way the truth can be disguised as a joke and taking it that way makes it somehow easier. Presenting the laugh as a gesture reserved only for the lower classes in the past served as one of the social borders, a behavior marker. But after social and political revolutions in history, the artists no longer follow this rule. The image of a person bursting in laughs still presents the lost control in his behavior, 
but this need for control over publicly expressed emotions became weaker and weaker. Comparing Officer and Laughing Girl by Johannes Vermeer and The Laugh by Umberto Boccioni side by side we can clearly see the switch in the social behavior norms, presented in the paintings. Although we do not see the face of the officer in the Vermeer's painting, his pose and the reaction of the girl makes us think about the story he is telling, how he presents himself, and how he probably wins the heart of the girl in front of him with his words. In this picture, he dominates over the audience even when he is back to us. But the laugh painted more than 250 years later shows a different situation. First of all, the tension about how this interaction between the laughing woman and the men around her is no longer relevant like in the situation between the officer and the girl. There is no pressure, the act of open laugh is enough to take the spot on her. The scene between the officer and the girl looks more private, the woman and the man in the Bocconi painting are sitting around a table, we can see the glasses with wine and the other tables with people on them. But the woman's face is the center of it all, Bocconi creates her image using the contrast between her intense red lipstick over her bright face, half hidden under her wide hat. She is exposing her chin and touching her fingers, this is the position of someone who is luring the others, she wants their attention. There are male figures that are intentionally turning their heads, they don't want to be associated with the group. Some sources say that Bocconi took inspiration from Bergson's theory of laughter and like other futurists locked clues about his personal beliefs. The beginning of a new era in human social structure and the idea of the challenged cultural habits are rooted in that painting. The ability to take our own pictures today allows us to document our most happy moments, the image of the wide smile became a symbol of happiness and success, but with the rise of social media and the overuse of this expression in advertising, the image of the wide full teeth smile became more and more associated with fakeness and farce. Promoting the happiness as only valid emotion to show in public can cause anxiety, we live in a time when we as viewers teach ourselves to question everything we see. So how an artist can express an extreme emotion and yet gives us food for thoughts not about its credibility, but the reason for the expression. Using the opposite emotion is an approach, that allows us to see through its hiding function and reflect the artist's thoughts. The laugh became a powerful tool in such times of uncertainty. One of the most popular artists nowadays that use this expression in his art is Yue Minjin, who paints his face frozen in laughter. He replicates his figure in the compositions, working in sculpture, watercolor, and prints. Using himself as a protagonist in all his art is related to his understanding of the laugh itself. He says, that when a human is in great pain, he can tolerate and express only a great laugh. His art is about human experience and some scenes are based on his own life. Yue is often classified as part of the Chinese cynical realism, but he identifies himself just as a pessimist. He starred his series inspired by a piece made in 1987 by the Chinese conceptual artist Gang Jinyi called The Second State, who himself examines the relationship between the individual and the collective in his art. The social criticism is finely dosed in his art. For example, his painting shows his laughing face multiplied in the front downside of the composition, and behind the faces, in the center of the painting, the large atomic mushroom cloud. One of the most famous works of Yue Minjin is a series of three meters tall bronze figures called Amazing Laughter that are located in Morton Park in Vancouver. The will of people to interact with them amuse even the author. Watching Yue Minjin's art we can ask a question, can we find the strength in ourselves to laugh in front of every our problem as a society and fix it? As he says sometimes, you only have laughter as a revolutionary weapon. If you like our content, please hit the notification bell and never miss a video from us.